What is up guys, my name is Soxer1 and welcome to another 24 hour video where we play a game for 24 hours straight, no break. Today we're playing Subnautica, which is a underwater survival game that is also known as a horror game. If you never heard of Subnautica or you're an expert at the game, this will be my first playthrough of the game, so it will be an experience for all of us. I nearly finished it as well, but before the video starts, these videos take a long time to record and edit, so if you can do me a favor and just smash that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you're new. And if if you want to join the community, make sure you join our Minecraft server at Socks.gg. It's the best. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was my first playthrough of Subnautica, and I was suddenly in danger in some sort of escape pod as things were exploding around me. Everything went in emergency mode, and I got smacked by this piece of metal, knocking me out. I woke up to more danger, as it looked like my entire escape pod was on fire. Talk about a bad day. There was just a fire extinguisher laying around, so that made things kind of easy. I was a little bit confused, but I assumed this was my life pod, and I crash landed, and everything is broken. This tablet was my inventory, and there was also showing the materials and crafting recipes, so it was kind of like Minecraft. Then there's a quick wake-up call that this is no Minecraft at all. When you climb out of your pod, you are presented with a crazy opener with this giant broken ship, and you are surrounded by water. Well, I gotta do it. I gotta jump into the water, and wow. What is that thing? Even after 24 hours, I still don't know what that thing is. I learned pretty quickly that the materials are all surrounded in this ocean, like these little rocks that give out copper. I kept on exploring around the ocean floor, and I found this really cool fish called the Peep. It looks so funny. And my chat told me to get these metal salvage parts because this was the most important resource in this game. There was also these creature eggs that I was super suspicious about because I watched too many horror movies and I knew if I brought this back to my base, it would explode into an alien. I, I'm not supposed to bring an alien egg back to my base. Well, I did return back to base and I learned that this fabricator is basically Subnautica's crafting table and has sick animations. And the poor peepers can be turned into cooked food, which is sad and good because I needed food but the poor peepers man i was also able to turn my metal salvage into titanium to get an upgraded o2 tank that gave me more oxygen if you haven't noticed already i only have a limited time underwater before i have to go back up to get air so i have to quickly scour the ground for resources i saw this really sparkly material in this cave when i got attacked by this red fish that was scary hey what the what he literally just exploded on me so we decided to give him a name the boomer fish which fits perfectly i also found these other alien things and i didn't like that they were in my hands ew i don't want this the nighttime was upon us and i had no idea what kind of creatures spawned during the nighttime so i decided it was just best to go back to base i used this time to look through all the stuff i could make like a survival knife or even a repair tool but my chat suggested that i should make a scanner first turns out the scanner is the most important item in the game you needed to learn about new items and learn about actually everything in Subnautica. The first thing I ended up scanning were these purple things that are actually called floaters according to the scanner, but honestly, that won't change my mind that these are gonna eat my soul at 3 a.m. I waited till day because I wasn't gonna do anything during the night, and a lot of people told me to scan myself, which I did. After scanning myself, my vital signs were normal, but this is very important to the plot. I spent the next day just scanning things, starting with this guy called the Gasopod, and I did that with everything, including the raw materials, just so it's in my data. Base. And as I kept on exploring, I found my first crash ship part, and this was kind of exciting. I was able to scan all these items on the ground, including this swivel chair, which meant I could craft it back at my base. But on some other things like this grav trap, it looked like I had to find multiple parts of that fragment in order to unlock it. I made sure to grab all the metal salvage as I could on my way back home. And even these yellow balls called creep vine sea clusters, because guess what these make? I mean, first I turned that into silicon rubber, and then that turns into a freaking knife. We got our first First weapon boys the next thing i wanted to make was the repair tool because if you haven't noticed half my escape pod is broken but in order to make this repair tool i need a certain material called cave sulfur that is only found behind boomer fish but i was in luck though because there was no boomer fish because they already exploded from my last encounter so i just was able to grab the cave sulfur and boom i was able to make the repair tool i started fixing up my pod and it was amazing all i had to do was left click and it just makes things fixed yay we have power again dude i wish something like this actually existed. I also fixed up this radio and I got myself a message. Rescue operation will be dispatched to your location in nine. 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 Oh. Nine. 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 Hours. 
bruh. It would take them 4,166 days in order for them to rescue me. Since being rescued was out of the question, I decided to make a flashlight because I hate the nighttime so much. I was also getting dehydrated, so I needed to get water soon, and there's two different ways, either using bleach or turning fish into water. Both of them sounded completely absurd, but turns out if you grab this bladder fish, you can literally turn it into bottled water for drinking. Ooh, that makes perfect sense. I also noticed that my storage was full, so I was going to have to make something that allowed me to make chests or cabinets or something that allows me to store items. In order to do that, I had to make a tool called the Habitat Builder, which I was lacking the materials to make. I had my flashlight, so I could mine at night, but honestly, I was still so scared. I don't feel safe in here, man. No, it's boom, boom, boom fish. Where is he? Absolutely terrifying. I had a reason to go back to my base though because it looked like I was getting a radio call which was interesting. Turns out it was a distress symbol from another life pod that needs help and I was gonna go save them. And look, they're only 700 meters away. That means I'm not alone on this alien planet. I started swimming in that direction and I found some interesting fish like this boomerang fish. That's the coolest thing ever. And I took advantage of these bigger caves because I still needed materials in order to make that habitat builder. I was excited when I was getting towards life pod 3 when I realized, yeah, there's no chance there was any survivors. Oh, they're dead. I did unlock some new things though, like the cruise log and even a compass. On my way home, I encountered another creature, but this guy was definitely on something. <laughs> what the? What is he spazzing the freak out? It's probably been eating all those alien mushrooms. And voila, back at home, I was able to make myself the habitat builder. I waited for the next day to start building, but I had this weird glitch where these alien birds were just frozen in place. Nonetheless, I started looking through all the options that I could build, and I had so many options. I didn't do any research, so I had no idea what I was doing. It was kind of annoying because I kept on getting attacked by these so-called stalkers, but we're gonna call them Karens. I don't know what I was thinking, but I went for like this 360 tube kind of base. Before I actually made oxygen in the base, I had to power it. So I had to craft up a couple solar panels, which I had to go get the materials for, but it was still pretty cheap. I got the solar panel eventually, made a hatch, and <laughs> entered my new base. I noticed right away I hated this 360 design because it actually made me motion sick. I went with a more simple design, and once I put in the radio, it already felt like home. I also received the message from the ship called Sunbeam and they were basically complaining that they wouldn't fly to us because they were about a week away. So I guess no one's gonna rescue us yet. I did get my wall lockers up though, so now I had a lot of storage space. And then I got a message that something was happening to the big ship. It ended up exploding! Like, oh, oh, what the? It's exploding! The problem is now the ship is leaking radiation, so I have to wear a radiation suit to protect myself. But at this current time, I didn't even notice. Before I went back out exploring, I made myself another fabricator in the this new base and even an upgraded oxygen tank that's gonna take my current oxygen of 75 and yeet it up to 135. Exploring caves were so much easier because I could just stay underwater for so much longer. I also learned if you fed Karen a peeper, it will actually leave you alone. I think she was also trying to give me this scrap metal, but I was just swimming away. Back to exploring, I found another shipwreck which was perfect because it had a lot of new items. A vending machine, an actual trash can, and even a new invention called a sea glider. This sea glider is like a portable Lamborghini that you take underwater and it like zooms you anywhere you want to go. I'm not even joking. Look how fast I'm going now. It runs on batteries like everything else and it even has this cool map that shows you all the terrain and stuff. Oh, and I used it to get to the big ship because everyone was telling me there was a lot of good loot here and there was. There were parts for a cyclops, which is like this big submarine and I headed towards the front of the ship because turns out you can actually get on the ship for more loot, but that's when I encountered the Reaper Leviathan. What is that? Oh, what the frick is that? I went straight back home and just messed with the new items I got like this gaming chair. The chair was called a swivel chair, but you couldn't turn in it? I mean, what kind of chair is this? Anyway, I got another distress signal for another life bot, so hey, maybe I'll meet some people. Nah, there was no one there. So I kind of assumed for all the future life bots that there was not going to be anyone there. But hey, we got some new crew log. But there's a lot of fragments laying around for new items like this laser cutter. And also a sea moth fragment, which I heard was really good because it's like a mini submarine that we could get. Near this crash site was this giant hole entrance, so I was like, why not? go in it. Wow, it actually looks really nice, but also super dangerous. There's like these lizard guys all over the place and my equipment was not ready for this, so I got out of there. When I got home, my chat was spamming me to scan myself and it said I was infected this time and I didn't even know what to do, but they told me it's just part of the game. With no clear objective, I just explored more crash sites and just get as many fragments as I could. And what's this? Mr. Sunbeam is calling me, telling me that they're gonna come save me in 40 minutes? Well, that was a pretty fast game. I still had time 
though and wanted to make some things like this laser cutter but I couldn't yet because I didn't have any diamonds. However, I did have enough resources for this battery charger because guess what it does? It recharges batteries. I gathered some more materials, got my inventory ready, and even made myself a beacon that would allow me basically make a point on the map so I don't forget where it is. Traveling to where Sunbeam wanted me to go didn't take too long but I was surprised that it was a giant island and on the island was a giant alien base. I mean, what even is this game? And on this alien island was jumping alien pancakes. These pancakes didn't do that much damage, but they just jumped all, all around the place. I walked up to the alien base and there was actually a door, which meant I could go inside? It looked like I just needed to get myself one of these purple tablets as like a key card to open the door. I had some time before Sunbeam landed, so I explored the island a bit and got some really good fragments. There was even an alien base under the water. Oh, and did I mention whatever that is? It's called the Warper and I'm deeply afraid. I don't even know what I was thinking here. I decided to watch it more and it started coming at me and then it started doing some ninjutsu symbols and warped me in a ball and at this moment I was screaming for my life. With two minutes left I was not going back in the water and there was actually a mountain here so I started climbing and I found myself the purple tablet which meant I could go into the alien base. Why am I so excited? That sounds horrifying. And the countdown was almost over when the alien base started turning into a cannon? I'm not even joking. Like it actually turned into a turret. Oh and Mr. Sunbeam is landing. <laughs> Mr. Sunbeam is gonna get annihilated. <laughs> he just blows up. Oh my gosh, what is this game? So much for a rescue. I guess since I'm here now, I have to go inside the alien base, right? So I put in the purple tablet and the door opened. Hello, alien ship. Please do not lay eggs inside of me. I was expecting a lot of aliens to be inside, but it was just data and magic green cubes. Do we pick up the magical cube? Of course we do. And getting downstairs was even more interesting. What is this? Whoa! Oh, that is a cool elevator. And aliens supposedly have Olympic-sized swimming pools. And on the rest of the alien ship, we found a doomsday device and green light with a button that we are definitely gonna press. Press button. Oh! I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm so dead. Oh! Oh! This is where I learned the entire alien planet has been infected and they are trying to get rid of this infection. Which supposedly I also have that infection. And we did it again because that's hot. Do it again! Oh yeah! I continue exploring and found an alien rifle and a giant alien arch that turns out to be a warp gate. After exploring everything in the alien base, I still needed to get diamonds for my laser cutter and there was still this other base in the water. Didn't find any diamonds, but I found a moon pool fragment, which is very good in the future. My chat advised me to go inside the mountain to find diamonds and it paid off. I went down a little deeper, but at this point of the game, I was still really afraid of everything. We did find something else on the mountain and this was this alien arc and if you put one of those magic cubes it creates a little cool warp gate i went through and i was on another island almost 2,000 meters away from my original base instead of exploring i went back to base because we had no room in my inventory so it's not like i could take anything first thing i did was add more solar panels because since my base was expanding i needed more power i mean we were five hours in at this point and all these lockers were full of stuff i wanted to spend a lot of my material by expanding my base and start making the scanner room i didn't know the room's purpose yet but it looked sick the room turns out to be super useful you can select what type of thing you want to find on the map and it will search it for you. It even has these tiny cameras that come out of the room and you can zoom around the ocean. I used it to search for fragments because I was still looking for parts of the sea moth or the mini submarine. That is also when the unexpected happens. Yo, what the frick is that? Yo, 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 what is going on? Just your friendly neighborhood spaceman. My chat explained to me that was the sea emperor calling for me, and during all that time, the scanner picked up all these fragment locations. I used the cameras to see if it was the part I was looking for, and it was. I went to go pick it up when the Karens start taking my cameras. He's got my camera! Nonetheless, I got my mobile vehicle bay fragment, got the materials from Boomerfish, and made it. And turns out it can only be placed on top of water, and this is where I'm gonna be building all my vehicles. And it was time to make the sea moth, but I was lacking in lead and copper. I journeyed out into new locations and also found new creatures like these jellyfish. I was really having trouble finding copper, but I did find this new area that had these giant blue balls, which also had a crash site nearby, and I got myself the moon pool fragments, so that will be perfect for my vehicles. And even Pronsoon fragments, which is basically the Titanfall 2 machine vehicle thing. Eventually, I got all my materials and turned those into batteries and those batteries into power cells. And boom, at the vehicle bay, we made our first sea moth. Look at it. It's so adorable. This thing described in one word, awesome. Tokyo Rift, water edition. And since I had the materials and fragments, I could also make the moon pool, which is basically the garage for the sea moth. The animation when you go inside it, it's even cooler. It's so just 
fluid. If it wasn't for my chat at this moment, my base would have been completely underwater because turns out you can't just keep on building and building. You have to reinforce your base. When I built that moon pool, my base strength dropped to zero. So if I built anything else, my old base would have been underwater. Anyway, since that was taken care of, I had a new sea moth. So now it was time to go to the rest of the life pods easily. Going to new areas on the ocean meant new biomes like this one and even some new creatures like the bone shark, but they didn't seem very aggressive towards me. I was closing into the life pod and then my sea moth started taking serious damage because I was going way below its water limit. That's when I realized I actually had to swim down to that life pod, which was fine except for the fact there was a underwater electric steelix swimming in the water. It took 10 minutes of talking to myself in order to get the courage to go down there. I just went for it. I grabbed all the data, the blueprints. I got some sort of weapon blueprint, but I didn't even care. I just went straight out of there. And since I was already here, I decided just to go to the other life pod because why not? The battery on this thing seems to last forever. The only problem is that it did become nighttime and the game looks completely different during the night. So much scarier. Like, look at this. How is this not the most horrifying thing you have ever seen? This life pod was a lot easier though, so I just grabbed what I needed and I got out of there. And guess what? There was another life pod to go to. I guess I've been ignoring a lot of radio calls recently. On my way, I found a lot of broken ship parts, so I was gonna make a pit stop. I got a prawn suit fragment, vehicle upgrade console, and even a modification station, which turns out to be very important. Back to the life pod, which was pure terror because I couldn't see anything and it was 300 meters down below so I couldn't take my vehicle down there. I just went, man, I went in a straight line down. I grabbed the blueprints and this one was great because it was actually an upgraded oxygen tank, which was mwah. There were no creatures down there, but hey, I'll take it. Back in my base, I had a lot of things to make and I started with this vehicle upgrade console. This will do exactly what it says. It will upgrade my vehicle. Turns out you can also change the name and color of your sub, so I made it pink and called it the sock sub. I started looking at the upgrades and there was a lot, including torpedoes. After talking to my chat, we knew we had to get hull reinforcement and depth since those were the most important. So yeah, that's what I crafted. So this meant I could go 300 meters down and take much bigger of a beating. I also threw in the storage upgrade because I was always running out of inventory space. There's probably better upgrades out there, but I decided to go with the torpedo upgrade last. Regular torpedoes were quite expensive, but the gas torpedoes were quite cheap. They just had to come from these like little ball things that <laughs> Mr. Gas Guy dropped. And boom, we filled our socks up with gas torpedoes. With these torpedoes and upgrades, I felt safe to go back to the ship, or at least I thought. Honestly, I was panicking so much about the Leviathan attacking me that I got lost in the front of the ship again. I ended up giving up this time, but I at least grabbed all the loot around the ship. I went back home, made myself a trash can, and never used it. I also made this vending machine and it actually gives you food, but it's very, very little. I knew if I wasn't gonna go explore the ship right now, I needed to go explore other areas, so I started with this red biome. I found some broken ship parts, but this time I had a laser cutter, so that means I could cut down the doors to go inside. I found more of the same things, and I realized if I want to find better stuff, I have to go deeper underwater. And so I did. There was a cave nearby and even some shipwreck down there, but it was quite deep. It was below 300 meters, so I couldn't take my sock sub, so I only had limited oxygen to quickly scour throughout the stuff. And I almost had a really close call of running out of oxygen, but I made it at the last moment. I ended up getting some pretty good things like the last modification station fragment. Then I dared myself to go even deeper down below to get these blood vines or whatever they were because they looked interesting. I was getting really risky though because I got attacked not once but two times which was very scary because I was nearly 600 meters down which was my furthest yet. I grabbed as much as I could and I left because I was getting spooked. On my way to another life pod there was another crashed ship with lots of parts which was just my luck. I found a lot of prawn suit fragments and then there was a little bit of a jump scare when I saw a warper just teleporting all around the place. Get in the sea moth! I rushed inside the broken ship and I found a lot of cyclops fragments which was perfect for that big submarine and a lot of other valuable things. Just outside the ship I found a time capsule like not something I expected. Inside were some plushies and posters and even a miniature aurora. That was definitely a successful mission so I just went back home. First thing I made in my base was this modification station because it turns out this has a lot of upgrades. One of those things is an upgraded air tank which is exactly what I needed. Look at that, 225 oxygen now, that's crazy. And the next thing I made was a flaming knife, because why not? I'm not joking, this knife is literally on fire. The best part is when I kill a fish, it instantly cooks it. It's like having a barbecue anywhere I want to. It also seems to have increased damage because I was able to take out Karen the stalker. Before I left again, I had to make a lot of wall lockers because I was just overflowing with materials. Time to go back to the alien base because there was still that other place I haven't been to yet. That place was that other island, but I haven't explored it yet because I didn't have enough room in my inventory to grab 
grab anything. And I'm glad I waited because it looks like there's a lot of things to explore. Turns out it was just a lot of different types of plants and also some new building stuff, but nothing too insane. Somehow I ended up getting lost in this island and I didn't know where the teleporter was. So I was just running around for 30 minutes, but it's all good. We found a way back. I dumped off all the new items that I got, but this time I wanted to go back to the big ship, but I was determined to go inside this time. I was scared as usual seeing the Reaper Leviathan just swimming around, but with a little luck, I found the entrance right away. There were these crab guys all around, but they weren't really a problem because I had a flaming knife now. I found one of the entrances, but I couldn't get in because after research, it turns out you need a propulsion cannon in order to move these objects out of the way. But we're in luck because turns out there's two entrances in order to get inside the ship. And this one didn't have anything blocking the way except for fire, but we had a fire extinguisher for that. Voila, we were inside the ship and it was time to go see all the treasures that were awaiting us. Most of the place was underwater and there were these leeches all over the place, but they weren't really a problem rather than just annoying. The first big thing I found was this place and it turns out all these reactor things or something, they were all broken. The objective here was to repair all of them, but it was a little bit hard when there was hundreds of leeches just attacking you. But then I got to it and repaired everything and it looks like I did it. Drive core breach sealed and radiation levels decreasing? Turns out it was leaking radiation and I didn't seem to notice the entire time. I think it was because I was wearing a radiation suit all the time. Anyway, there were still lots of parts to explore. I found an entire suit that just had prawn suit after prawn suit and I'm pretty sure I unlocked it after this. I found my way to the corridors and I mostly just got supply crates and more information. What really interested me what was going to be in the captain's corridors. I ended up getting some data about an escape rocket so that means I can actually leave this planet? What I found funny though is that this same picture of the same woman was in every single bedroom of every single part of the ship. That means every single person simped over this woman? Anyway, there was still lots of the ship to explore. For the most part, I just found more loot crates and more upgrades, but nothing too insane. I thought it would be a good time to go back to my base because we did unlock a lot of new things. The first thing I did was label my base with a beacon and called it the sock drawer. So that's what my base is called. The next part is that I just wanted to admire this cat poster with this beautiful view of the ocean. I mean, I'm loving this game. One of the things I unlocked was a multi-purpose room and this is exactly what I needed to make a bigger base. Why stop there? You can stack them on top of each other. So I made two of them. There was so much more space in these rooms. So I just yeeted down an aquarium because I can. One thing that was bugging me is my moon pool was not connected to the rest of my base. So I fixed that. Now this is epic. I can go into my sock sub without ever leaving my base. I yeeted down some reinforcements, some windows, and put some fish in my aquarium. And I must say, I'm pretty proud of myself. Now it was time to put on our big boy pants because we were going to make the big boy Cyclops. What was funny about this is that I couldn't build it near my base. I had to build it in way deeper water. And that's what I did. And I didn't realize how massive this was. It's like a tank. It wasn't only cool on the outside. It was also cool in the inside. What am I playing right now? I'm supposed to drive this thing around? It's so big. There was also a lot of space. So I decided to put down a couple lockers because I'm assuming I can store stuff here as well. To sum it up, this submarine is a movable base. I felt so scared driving it because I feel like I would just smash into everything. Nonetheless, I named it the Sock Marine and made it completely pink. The Cyclops didn't have many upgrades though, so I was going to leave it and go search for more minerals so I can upgrade it. There's still some places I haven't explored yet, so I'm going to do that now. For some reason, I got really comfortable exploring in the dark. Either that or I'm just really tired now and I don't care. I instantly regret it though because I encountered something so horrifying that I couldn't even describe it and it started shooting explosions out of its brain. Those explosions knocked out my power and then I see this horrible octopus come and attack my sock sub. I thought the Reaper Leviathan was scary, but this is a perfect description of the most horrifying thing I could ever think of. Its real name was a crab squid and it started floating away, so I quickly repaired my sea moth and I got out of there as fast as I could. My chat was telling me I'm going to have to encounter a hundred more of those in order to progress further in the game, so I'm already looking forward to that. Where I wanted to go now was this pink place called Jelly Shroom Cave and I was hoping it wasn't gonna be as scary. It was nice down here, so I had high hopes, which instantly turned into fear as I saw these giant vipers coming out of the mushrooms. I just went for it. I stayed near the edges because there was a lot of good materials all around the place and stuff I needed for future upgrades. I progressed to the biome and turns out there was a life pod that I needed to go to, so I went towards that. I had a little bit of a jump scare because I was curious to see what was inside the mushroom. Oh! Honestly, these crab snakes didn't scare me as much as that octopus thing, so I kind of just attacked them. Maybe I got a little overconfident because when I went inside the mushroom, he came back to attack me and he grabbed me. It didn't scare me though. I just don't find him creepy. Eventually, I did find the abandoned habitat. It was quite difficult to explore because there were these jellyfish 
fish all over the place and the snaky boy was going through the buildings i discovered some new items though and even a new pda there was still something i wanted to do before i left this biome and that was grab whatever these guys were guarding in these mushrooms i got myself a creature egg and i learned that this egg is for that snaky boy i got everything i needed and headed back home to make some new stuff one of those new things is this filtration machine that will give me fresh water which is great because getting water is a pain i also had to add a lot of solar panels because now i had all this new machinery and it all needed power since all the base stuff was taken care of it was time to get some more materials to finish my upgrades what kind of upgrades well i want to upgrade my sea moth so we can go deeper underwater because right now it can only go to 300 meters and honestly i already had a lot of materials stored up so i skipped the second upgrade and went straight for the final third dev module upgrade will allow me to go 900 meters down below this will make my life 10 times easier and i'll even be able to explore new places the next thing i wanted to make was the prawn suit because i had it unlocked but i needed these little gel sacks that i couldn't find i searched all night and i couldn't find anything but as soon as the sun rose i found it right away which was great here's the best part i wasn't going to use them to make the prawn suit right away i was going to use them to grow more of them all the plant like stuff you can grow in a garden and just get more of them which is perfect because you don't have to go searching for them anymore while i waited for that to grow there was another distress call so i was on my way it was so easy to reach with my upgraded socks up while i was here i grabbed a lot of rubies because i'll need them for the prawn suit when i came back all these gel sacks have grown so my garden idea worked the only thing left was getting myself some gold which i had a little trouble with but i got it all here it is the prawn suit this gave me some huge titanfall vibes and it looked awesome i almost felt indestructible in this thing like i could take on the world i didn't have any upgrades for it so the only thing i could do right now was punch things that sounds like a perfect machine to me but for now i just put it in my cyclops so i could upgrade it later i got myself another distress signal but this one was a lot deeper than the others so i'm glad i had the upgrade i had a little trouble getting there because it wasn't a straight way down it was in some sort of cave that i couldn't find i find out why very soon because it seems like it was even beneath these giant blue balls which is scary because that's where all the monsters are i saw where i needed to go where i got warped out of my sock sub and i started panicking and mr creepy octopus was waiting for me just spinning around i really dislike this guy i just went for it. i just started slashing and bashing him and then he hit me and half my health just disappeared i'm just gonna be a good little boy and stay in my sock sub where it's nice and quiet <laughs> anyway i still had to explore this abandoned base so i could unlock new things and i did i learned about this giant aquarium called an alien containment and it was really big and even some more logs but i'll be honest i don't think i've read one yet and since i was here it looks like i could go even deeper so that's what i did now this place was creepy but it was also peaceful it was called the lost river and oh my goodness is that a giant skull let me just scan that real quick oh ancient fossilized skeleton very cool and to my surprise there was even an alien base here you already know what i did i stole all their little green cubes and after that i kept on exploring and i found these giant ribs and there was also a snaky boy oh that's not a snaky boy that's literally death i'm uh i'm gonna just head out okay nope goodbye i'm not joking i had enough with that place i'm going away you know what i'd rather do stack more multi-purpose rooms on more multi-purpose rooms because that's epic and now i had space to put in this giant aquarium or alien containment select carefully which life forms you bring on board they may also be studying you Bruh. the only thing left was putting creatures in it and everyone was telling me to put these cuttlefish in them because they were adorable i didn't see it. i wanted to put down the snaky boy but they were demanding this guy so that's what we did and after a short while they already hatched and yeah i could see it they're pretty adorable i took one outside and you can play with them and they do flips and twirls and stuff and yeah it was time to go back out because guess what there was another distress call this one was surprisingly really easy to get to there wasn't even any creatures protecting that me. all being taken care of i think it's time that we start upgrading our prawn suit first upgrade i gave it was the drill because that seemed like the most important one before i went to go out and test it i had a lot of power problems recently but i had a solution i had a lot of plant stuff like the gel sacks so i made this bioreactor which was perfect because i turned that plant stuff into energy and it looks really cool so i ain't complaining now it's time i took my sock marine with my prawn suit and it was time to try out the mining and no you don't mind those tiny little ores you mind these giant little clusters that have so much stuff this whole batch of quartz gave me an entire inventory full of quartz that was crazy they didn't stop there there were all sorts of raw materials it was like going to costco and buying everything in giant bundle sizes and i could take all these materials and just put them back on the sock marine instead of going back to my base there was also something i wanted to try out there were three different speed modes on the cyclops and i never tried the full speed and it went pretty fast but turns out that's only for emergency and it put my engine 
engine on fire. It's better that I learned this now rather in a dangerous area. That's when it occurred to me, I still haven't unlocked all the stuff like the propulsion cannon. I haven't found that yet. There's still an entire side of the sea that I haven't explored yet. So that's what I'm going to do now. I found a really big shipwreck. So I was hoping for some new stuff. I didn't find the propulsion cannon, but I found it for the prawn suit. So I guess that kind of worked and more Cyclops upgrades, which is always nice. What was most important to me was this power cell charger because I'll need that to recharge the batteries of the sock marine. I also wondered instead of going down deep where the blue balls are, what happens if you just go past it? Like, is there an edge of the map? And whoa, what are those things? I called these guys daddy long legs because that's exactly what they look like and they didn't seem aggro to me. So I kind of just left them be. My plan now was to head back to the lost river because I wanted to make a base there. The reason is because in order to progress further in the game, that means I have to go deeper underwater and my base will always be too far away. So why not have a base that is right in between? It would make me feel a lot safer. I don't think I could use solar panels down here. So I just use the gel sacks again and feed it to the bioreactor, which all works out. I put all the other basic stuffs like a fabricator and some lockers so I can already start storing stuff here. And the best part of this base is that it's right next to this giant skull and I called it Shrek Swamp because if you look at it, it looks like Shrek Swamp. Now the fun only began because now I'm going to try to sneak past the Goth Leviathan and see what's past all this. I don't know if I'm just really tired or just not scared anymore because I just took my socks up and went right next to them and they started chasing me. I started freaking out. I took another step and got out of my sub and started scanning everything. I didn't stop there. I started scanning the scary creatures even when it was trying to eat me. What am I doing? I learned that this river prowler is an aggressive creature. Hmm, who couldn't see that coming? I had enough of that place and I was ready to head home. Before I went home, I checked out the daddy long legs again just to see if they dropped anything and they just dropped alien feces. So that was fantastic. They also seem to dig up a lot of ores and stuff, but I have the prawn suit now, so it's not that useful. According to chat, to progress further in the game, I have to take my cyclops and take it to the river zone so I can go deeper underwater. So that means I have to go past all those creepy monsters in this giant submarine and also past the ghost leviathan. How is this a good idea? So that means I have a lot of preparations to do, like upgrading my cyclops and upgrading my suits. I was really over preparing. I was trying to make sure I had everything upgraded and everything ready to go. The strangest thing happened. There was a flopper inside my sock marine and it was just floating around like as if there was water in here or something. Anyway, I started bringing a lot of materials for my base and bringing it over to this giant cyclops. And before I could finish, the 24 hours were over and I fell asleep. I completed the challenge, but I was not satisfied where we left off. So I was going to stream another time. So I continued where I left off and I planted these lantern trees in my cyclops as basically an infinite food and water source. If we're going to be going down to an area called the lava zone, we better be ready. I got all the upgrades on the Cyclops that I could, but I still had to navigate this big ship all the way to the Lost River, and I had no idea how I was going to do that. The Sock Marine had these extra cameras that allow me to see where I'm going from different perspectives, which really helped me go through these giant blue balls. What I was scared most about was the monsters, but my chat was telling me the Warfers can't hurt me in here, and as long as I moved in slow mode, I would be good. And I did it. I was able to bring my Cyclops all the way back to my Shrek swamp base, which is crazy. I brought the prawn suit with me, which was very important because now I have to go drill giant ores in this green gas that only I can do in the prawn suit. I found a new type of ore called nickel, and this will allow me to upgrade all my machines to go further underwater. The scary part is that it looked like most of the ores were near the ghost leviathan, and he was not messing around. He wanted to eat my toes. I definitely came a long way from when I first started because I was trying to grapple onto him and start drilling him in the face in order to kill him, but that didn't work. I got as much nickel as I got, and I kept on dodging the ghost leviathan and that was pretty much it. I also found uranium but turns out this is only for a nuclear reactor. But now it was time. I had the nickel and that meant I could upgrade my cyclops to go even further underwater. The funny part is in order to upgrade to MK2 you need MK1. And MK1 is in my cyclops so I had to quickly take it out, upgrade it to MK2 and quickly put it back in the upgrade section because currently my cyclops is taking damage because it's way under the current water depth. Oh wow, never mind. It only took like 1% damage. That's pretty funny and it's healing it back it was now time to bring the cyclops past the ghost leviathan because that's the only way how we'll get to the lava zone i was really scared but my strategy was to hug the wall and keep my cyclops in silent mode and just hope that would work and it worked he didn't seem to care and we must be going the right direction because i found this great holy tree and next to it was a hole that seems to go way deeper so i guess here we go yep this is definitely what we were looking for there's lava i knew i was gonna encounter some new creatures but what is that that is 
massive. That is the biggest Leviathan I have ever seen. To make matters worse, there's also these creatures called Lava Larva that attach to my Cyclops and suck up all its energy. And to top it all off, I forgot to upgrade my mech suit, so that means I couldn't even use it here in the Lava Zone, and I have to go back up to my Shrek base in order to upgrade it. I wasn't that mad, because now I know what I'm going up against. I went back into my prawn suit, and I started getting all the minerals for the upgrade. While still dealing with the Ghost Leviathan, I'm pretty sure he just wants to play. In order to upgrade my prawn suit, I needed to make a moon pool again, which was fine, because I could just connect it to my current base. I forgot to put in the reinforcement plates, and my whole base went underwater, but I fixed that. Before I upgraded, it also came to me that I should build a base in the lava zone. So I started gathering materials for that too, because that way I'll be able to recharge my Cyclops while it's still in the lava zone. But without further ado, I finally had enough to upgrade my prawn suit with MK1 to allow me to mine in the lava zone, which is really important. And since I was here, I also got the prawn suit jump jet upgrade. This made me fly up so high so quickly and for so long as well. The only thing left was getting the rest of the materials for the lava base. And of course, playing with the ghost Leviathan again, because he's just so much fun. Strap in, ladies and gentlemen, because now it was time to go back into the lava zone. This time, I stay near the edges and try to find a good place to make a base. It was really difficult, though, because these lava lizards wouldn't stop attacking me. Like, they just wouldn't stop ever. And using the knife against him did, like, nothing. He really didn't care. It was like I was giving him a back massage. I also didn't forget about those creatures that attach to my ship and start sucking all its power. I had a defense against that this time, this shield thing that literally puts a shield around my ship and defends me. Back to the base, I chose to use a thermal plant because we were literally right next to lava so it was the perfect power source and I attached it using some power transmitters I was getting plenty of power which was perfect and I also threw down the cell charger because I constantly had to recharge the batteries of the Cyclops I didn't forget about reinforcement this time and I even put in some windows and the view was insane I'm telling you this lantern tree is the best thing we put in our sock marine I basically have infinite food and water everything seemed to be set up so now it was time to take my prawn suit and start mining stuff what I was looking for was this blue stuff which can only be found in the lava zones and I need it in order to upgrade my Cyclops and prawn suit again. Mining is very dangerous though because there's these warpers all around me and they actually warped me out and I took a huge amount of damage. I had some backup health kits but I was extra careful when mining now. This took me an entire hour though because this stuff is really rare like how netherite is in Minecraft. But I got everything I need and I got the Cyclops MK3 upgrade. That now means my sock marine has a 1700 meter depth limit which is crazy. So that meant I started exploring again and I found my first alien entrance in the lava zone. I had to be very careful though because that sea dragon was stalking me this entire time and he's a little too close for comfort. I made my way through and I found an entire alien base. I had a little problem though. I got a glitch where it thought I was no longer in water and that this was all air. I'm not joking. I'm outside my prawn suit and I'm jumping around as if I'm on land, but this is all underwater. The problem with this is that the prawn suit thinks it's on land, so it can't actually glide upward. So I was stuck down here. I just relogged the good save and I made my way into the alien base. I yeeted down some purple tablets and I came across all of this stuff, which was just mostly data and a lot of green sparkly effects. What it was telling me is that there was another cave beneath me with a giant organism so I guess we have to go find out what that is I also found a blue tablet so let's go now it was time to go find a cave that was beneath all of this and I had to be very careful because the sea dragon was literally just looking at me and I'm not joking when I said he was after me he started breathing fire like literally fireballs like he was Bowser or something I started to freak out and I launched a decoy missile and that seemed to do the trick but after a little bit of searching I think I found it the area that connects the lava zone into a deeper lava zone oh Oh my goodness, this place is insane and scary, and oh, it's you again. I am what you see. Are you sure about that? Because you're very scary. At this time of the game, I knew I had to go find her, and I knew I was going the right direction because I saw this giant lava castle. I went as quick as I can because that sea dragon, man, it's still giving me nightmares. I yeeted in that blue tablet, and I got a much more dramatic opening. It was like a red carpet just for me. So welcoming, so nice of them. There was a lot of weird things in this alien base, like this unusual box, literally, I don't understand. And there was also these teeny tiny robots, but they just kind of ran around. Got even more weird when I found to preserve fetus? I mean, what? This also seemed like a good time to do one more self-scan, and it was definitely worth it because it was basically telling me I was dying. And then I started having some sort of Pokemon transformation? I mean, that does not look right. Uh-uh. Nope. I am definitely not healthy. Someone call me a doctor. I kept moving through the alien base, and I found this blue water. Like, it was a little bit too blue. It looked mysteriously blue. I really didn't want to jump in, but there was nowhere else to go, and whoa! What is this? A secret underground lair? And the 
the most freaky thing happened. This giant leviathan started climbing up aboard like some sort of monster. I start swimming back. I'm afraid. And then she asked me if I want to play. No, I don't want to play with you. What is she talking about? Then she started talking about how her species is dead and I came here to save them. But I took this chance to go for the head. Thor taught me something. He said go for the head or at least the eyes or something. Anyway, she wanted me to get her kids to hatch because they weren't listening to her or something. Instead, I took my prawn suit and tried to destroy the eggs before they hatched. I'm joking. I put in the iron cube like she requested and all the eggs started like glowing and everything and she was very happy. But then she started asking for me to collect all these materials, mostly garden stuff, but actually I, I really didn't have time for that right now. I had to end it right there because that was an extra six hours of gameplay to my already 24 hours. But don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Here's someone else's gameplay where the eggs hatch and then the mama dies. The end. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that 24 hours plus six more hours of me playing Subnautica. If you made it this far, you earned yourself 24 gold stars. And if you want more Subnautica or more 24 hour videos, please hit that like button and subscribe. It means more than you know.